Hey there folks, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of Backpacking Basics. This is all about going to sleep while you're out on the trail. I receive emails all the time in regards to like tips and tricks in regards to falling asleep when you're in the backcountry, when you're out camping and backpacking and so on. If you're not a seasoned vet of the trail, if you're not really comfortable with the dirt, being out in the forest in the middle of nowhere with nature and so on, going to sleep at nighttime can be a little bit difficult. With that being the case, I have some tips and tricks which will help you fall asleep when you're out on the trail. Grab a cup of coffee, let's get started. First off, when it comes to getting a good night's sleep, you need to focus on the biggies, right? Sleeping bag, sleeping pad. You also need to make sure that you have the right tent for the adventure. Starting with sleeping bags, you wanna make sure that your bag is suitable for the adventure that you're on. Meaning, you wanna have the right temperature range for the night that you're going to be out, or nights, right? You wanna make sure that when you go to bed that you are nice and comfortable. If you are cold, you're not going to sleep very well. Not at all. Hand warmers do help. You can put them in your socks, keep your feet nice and toasty. You can have them by your armpits, your hands, whatever you want. I find that that really does help on those cold nights. But ultimately, it is the sleeping bag which is going to keep you warm. So make sure that you have the right bag for the job, otherwise you will not sleep very well. Next up, sleeping pads. Again, very, very important. Those two items go together like peas and carrots. Blech, I hate peas and carrots. <laughs> I don't like either one of those, but whatever. Anyways, your sleeping bag is going to keep you warm, but so is your sleeping pad. Also, your sleeping pad is going to give you cushion from the cold, hard ground. Now, there are many different types of sleeping pad out on the market. I have videos about that, so I will not be discussing that here. The point that I want to drive home to you all is that you need a pad that's suitable for your adventure and that is absolutely comfortable for you. Everybody has a different comfort rating. Some people can sleep on a closed cell foam mat and be fine. I'm not that type of person. It hurts my back. I like to have a good old-fashioned air mattress. Now, you can get a very lightweight air mattress. They are going to be a little bit pricey, but in my opinion, it's well worth it. When it comes to cushion, I look for at least two inches up to three, you know, for really good distance off of the ground. That gives you a good amount of cushion from the ground. It also gives you a good amount of cushion from the cold air, the cold ground. If you're out in the summertime, you do not need an insulated sleeping pad. You will actually appreciate the coolness of the ground. If it's the winter time, you do want something with a higher R value, something that reflects back more heat. So the point here is you need to be comfortable and you also need to be warm or cool depending on your trip. You do not want an insulated sleeping pad for the hottest part of the summer and you don't want a non-insulated pad for the coldest part of the winter. You need something that's comfortable for you. If you have hip issues and so on, make sure that your sleeping pad is thick enough for you. The next item is not an essential item by any means, but it will help. This is what I consider a luxury item, and that is a pillow. For inexperienced backpackers, a pillow can make all the difference in the world. Having that support behind your head, being able to lay over, roll over, whatever you want to do, that is going to give you the edge so you can get a good night's sleep. Experienced backpackers can usually get away with not using a pillow. They can use a stuff sack. Uh, they can use their backpack, a pair of shoes. I'm at the point now where I've literally used rocks, slept on rocks, right on it. No issues at all. If you're the type of person who needs a pillow, there are plenty of options out there. I've done tons of reviews on them. Some are better than others. So yeah, it really is up to you. You can of course bring a pillow from the house. I've gone backpacking and I mean it, literal backpacking for like 10 miles with my friends who have brought their pillows with them. It's that important. It does make a difference, it really does. So if you're the type of person who needs a pillow, bring one. It doesn't have to be the pillow on your bed, but it can be. There are plenty of options out there. You wanna make sure that you have the right tent for you. Some people are not comfortable camping out underneath a tarp. They are worried about bugs and so on, so the tent might be a better fit. Some people like hammocks, and that works just fine. Some people do not. Make sure to bring the type of shelter for you that really suits you best. Everybody's different, so bring something that works best for you. For most individuals, I recommend starting with a tent. It's a good foundation. It's a good place to start from. A good tent will protect you from the elements, and that's weather, bugs, and so on. Now let's talk about tent placement. That is a huge aspect when it comes to being comfortable in the outdoors, especially if you have a rain shower come in, or maybe even a strong thunderstorm. That does happen. You want to make sure that you have your tent in the right spot. When it comes time to set up your tent, you're looking at the environment, trying to select your spot, right? Let the environment dictate where your tent is going to go. You really do want to find a flat location to put your tent, that's very important. Otherwise, you're going to slide around, you're going to roll off your sleeping pad, it's a huge pain. Sometimes you just have to do it. 
but if you don't have to, find a flat location. Make sure that it's an area where the water will not pool. Like if you're down in a hollow where the water's gonna go if it starts raining real hard, that's the wrong place to be. Make sure to check out the trees. Make sure that there are no dead branches, dead limbs, widow makers, and so on. Moving on, there's earplugs and masks. One of those I recommend, one of them I do not. Masks, that's absolutely fine. If you're the type of person who has to have one of those sleeping mask things on to get some rest, bring it with you, right? Those things do not weigh much bring it along. Now, when it comes to earplugs, that is a product which I aggressively do not recommend. That is not a good idea. Unless you're like staying in a hostel or something, if you're someplace where people snore like mad, okay. But if you're out in the backcountry, you really do not need to have earplugs in your ears. You need to be able to sleep, but you need to be alert at the same time, not only for animals, but for people as well. In this world, there are elements outside of your tent which can harm you. With animals, that is really, really unlikely. It's a possibility, but it's very unlikely. The main culprit will be humans, unfortunately. So you definitely need to be alert, right? I can go to sleep and sleep great, but at the same time, I hear every stick breaking in the forest, and I can wake up, do what I have to do, go back to sleep, and sleep great. Eventually, you will get to that point as well. That really comes with experience. I do not recommend those earplugs. You don't really want to start that sort of habit. You want to be able to hop inside of your tent and fall asleep naturally and get good sleep while being alert. It really is important. So with the earplugs, do not bring those. Do not bring them. To make things nice and easy, if at all possible, make sure to have your tent set up before it gets dark. Also, make sure that you have your camp all stowed away, have everything picked up before it gets dark. That way when it gets dark, you don't have to worry about finding this, putting this there. It's already done. Since it's getting dark, you wanna make sure that you have a good, reliable light source with you. Maybe a light stick, maybe a headlamp, maybe a flashlight. Headlamps make things super easy because you don't have to hold it. Make sure that you have that light source ready to go. That way, if you hear something, you can check it out. If you need to use the bathroom, no issues. If you need to grab some water, you can do that. The next thing that you wanna focus on is your food. Make sure that you have your food stowed in the proper manner, depending on where you're at. Here in my area, this is bear country. You do not wanna sleep with a bag of food inside of your tent. That's a very bad idea. So before it gets dark, I try to throw up my bear bag. Sometimes I use bear canisters, especially if I'm out west. Do what you have to do, but make sure that you're being smart. If you eat inside of your camp, make sure not to spill any food. And if you do, make sure to pick it up, clean it up, and get it out of there. That's very important. If you spill any food on your clothing, make sure to change it and put that with your bear bag. Do not keep that inside of your tent. That bird is singing to me, I swear. Before you go to bed, make sure to use the restroom. Go pee. Women have to go pee more than men. It's a simple fact. So it's recommended that a woman actually pees 30 minutes before they turn into the tent. And then when they turn into the tent, pee again. If you have water inside of your bladder at the time that you go to bed, your body has to keep that water warm, the same temperature as your body, which can actually keep you cooler because your body is having to focus on that. So go pee, you will stay warmer in the long run. If you're worried about warmth, make sure to nibble on something before you go to bed. Have a small snack before you turn in. That will basically ignite your furnace as it dissolves and breaks down that food. You will stay warmer. If you wanna get a good night's sleep, don't wake up in the middle of the night and have to go pee. Of course, if you have to, no big deal. Just make sure that you have your headlamp, your light source ready to go. So you're inside of your sleeping bag, the lights are out, it's time for bed, but you're hearing noises out in the forest. Now, this is one of those things where you simply have to get used to it. Experience is what is going to help you with all of your fears. It really is. You know, in the forest, in the middle of the night, even the smallest critter sounds humongous. I mean, just gigantic, right? One time I was camping on top of this mountain. It's actually White Top Mountain, and I'm sleeping away, and I, I hear some footsteps, and they sound huge. They absolutely sounded huge stomp stomp and then something kicked the living hell out of this metal bucket that was apparently in the woods scared me to death i mean i thought for sure it was going to be a bear turn on my headlamp and I look and it was like this small deer <laughs> it just happened to be walking by in our minds we create matters and situations and elements and forces that are much worse than real life animals want absolutely nothing to do with you and i think that's the most important thing that you have to remember Bears really don't want anything to do with you, neither does anything else. So, for the most part, 99% of the time, what you're hearing in the woods means absolutely nothing. That 1% you do have to be alert for. Sometimes bears will come into camp, mountain lions, bobcats, and so on, 
it happens, you have to be prepared to act and you have to know what to do. So with that being said, make sure that you study the environment that you're going into, make sure that you understand the threats that are present and how to handle them. I've been in the outdoors for over 30 years, guys, and I've never had an issue with animals, ever, ever. I have had issues with people. I hope that you guys never do but that is a real possibility. It has been said by individuals much smarter than me that mankind is the plague upon this earth, and in many ways, they are right. So do keep that in mind. The bump in the night more than likely is nothing, but the true worry is someone else. And I'm not trying to scare you. It is a simple fact of life. So be prepared, do what you have to do. Some people will sleep with a handgun. You know, if you carry and conceal, that's fine. Some people will carry a knife, that's fine. Do what you have to do to feel comfortable. Of course, make sure to follow the laws and so on. Next up, when it comes to getting a good night's sleep, it's all about being comfortable, and that pretty much goes hand in hand with everything else that we discussed. You know, if you're hot, strip down. You know, unzip your sleeping bag and so on. Maybe unzip the fly of your tent if you can, if the weather permits it. Allow some air to come in. Do what you have to do to be comfortable so you can sleep good. If you've been out hiking and backpacking all day and you want to be comfortable, take your socks off. If it's warm enough, go sockless. If you're cold, put on clean, dry socks. That will make all the difference in the world. It is very hard for you to stay warm when your feet are cold and damp, so change those socks. It's like sitting there watching me, singing to me. <laughs> I can't think straight. Okay, uh, anyways, when it comes to backpacking and camping with children, routine is going to be important. Try to follow the same sort of routines that you have at home. This especially works when your kids are younger. You know, if they brush their teeth right after dinner or if they have like a little bit of a drink before bed, something like that, try to follow those routines. That will help them be more comfortable. Familiarity is key. Already they're in a situation which is not very familiar, so that routine is going to help them a great deal. It must be mating season or something, I don't know. But anyways, when it comes to getting a good night's sleep, it's all about being comfortable. And it really is up to you to make that happen. The right clothes, the right gear, the right sort of setup, all those factors come together so you can sleep well. When it comes to the outdoors, there will be times where you just do not sleep very well, where there's just too much noise in the forest, it happens. Uh, there'll be times where it's storming too hard. It's raining too hard. You cannot get rest. You're worried about it, right? In time, experience will change all of that. Experience is what will calm your fears. You know, once you've been out in the outdoors long enough, you will realize, like I said before, there's nothing out there that really wants to have anything to do with you. It's a simple fact. Humanity, that truly is your only worry. That is one reason why I like to really go out in the middle of nowhere. I like to backpack and camp by myself. I have a great time that way. People who have issues with bears, it's because they drew those bears in. They left food out, spilled food on the ground, and so on. If you don't give animals a reason to come into your camp, they won't. Now, if you guys have any suggestions on getting a good night's rest, make sure to comment down below. Of course, if you have any suggestions to me on future videos to make, or if you have any specific questions, let me know, everyone. Guys, until next time, strength and honor to you all. See you all around. Get a good night's rest, everyone. See ya.